Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations. Previously, the entire case got flipped on its head. The statue, the Golden Primadex statue that was in the Alabastian Embassy was discovered to have the fingerprints of one Manny Cochin on it, the Secretariat for Babal. And what's more, yeah, it turns out that statue in the Alabastian Embassy it was actually Babal's. At some point, the statues got swapped. And now, we're out here in the Rose Garden trying to figure out where the hell the Yadagarasu disappeared to because their shadow was sighted here. So, um, things are looking pretty weird from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Last time we wrapped things up by talking to everyone, now let's actually explore the environment. Look at these statues. Hmm. A statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primadux. Oh, okay, that that explains a lot. Hmm. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you are lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue and she somehow made the leap to that. There is an overturned spotlight here. When the Yadagarasu appeared, the audience that was waiting for the speech to start panicked. I suppose that's when someone must have knocked it over. I'm having a tough time visualizing the mass confusion that took place here. I thought to use my whip to capture the Yadagarasu. However, there were people in my way and I was unable to land even a single lash. So... <laughs> She ended up lashing a bunch of innocents? Oh my god. I suppose this means that some other poor saps were hit instead. Yeah. <laughs> god. And these roses are pretty. Is it possible that the Yadagrasu hid in these bushes? Of course not. They're rose bushes. You've been spending so much time with Scruffy and that girl, they're rubbing off on you. But it's all right. I'll wake you out of your stupor. Now, the next time you feel like sleep talking, remember that I'll whip you for real. All I tried to do was offer up a possibility, and this is what I get. <laughs> okay. Hmm. And there are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. It's not just for aesthetics. This pool's water is also used in putting out fires. I see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically. The fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. If this water is used to put out fires, I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. Which suggests that this pool was recently used somehow in this embassy. I guess I'll take some notes about it, just in case. Yeah, probably used to, you know, put out the fire in the Babalese Embassy. Hmm. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Larry, what the hell? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I know you I know earlier you you were hunting for a wet hole, but not like this, man. <laughs> oh, he's crying. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I'd cry too if I were Larry. <laughs> How dare you surprise me like that? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Edgy. Thanks for what you did back there. Your gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that! Do you really think that I'm the type to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Alright then, did you, by chance, fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So you know my son, right, Edgy? Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho, 
Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Steel Samurai. Steel Samurai son. Your son? I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook hands with the ambassador. And I'm pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him! You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? And how old is this child of yours anyway? Huh? Oh, um... How old is he again? Larry, this is the first time I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that chick, the pink princess. The... pink... princess. Miss Von Karma, I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there. However, I believe what he is looking for is the doll of the Iron Infant. Yep, because I'm the Steel Samurai through and through, heart and soul. And the Iron Infant is my cute little son. You have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Larry? We have not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant. But rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now, get out of there. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there. Wait, wait! <sighs> well... It's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. That just happened. Oh my god. Hmm? This statue bears a resemblance to the Primaduck statue. The plaque says, King Primaduck in the battlefield. In order to save the queen, King Primadux put his life on the line and went to war. So, Primadux was actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply someone imitating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that a real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose there's that, too. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagorasu. I believe I figured out its true origin. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now let's hear what you know on the subject. What really cast the shadow of the Yadagorasu? Oh! Oh? Hmm. Here I was all confident that it was some sort of... Some sort of like sticker or sheet of paper put over one of the spotlights, but... This statue is actually bent over in the exact same pose as the Yadagarasu. Like, okay, the, the pose is the same, but the silhouette is not. There are way too many spikes. Oh, wait, I can swap. Oh. Um? Okay, this one's the correct angle, I think, but... No, I, I want to say it's... This statue? Take the suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagarasu. Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Objection! Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Yadagarasu. You are correct. However, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. Oh, multiple light sources pointed at the same thing made the same shadow. Well, I mean, uh, each contributed a part of a final shadow, I should say. What do you mean by only one part? 
What is the other part to the real form of the Yadagarasu's shadow? Probably this statue, then. It's... another statue? The Yadagarasu's shadow was made from the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panic state. However, if we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared... You believe that the two shadows will create the Yadagarasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yadagarasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primadux in the battlefield, the shadow of the king's statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, if we set a light up on the queen who spoke of love to King Primadux, her silhouette would also appear on the backdrop to the stage. Aha! So if we were to combine the two shadows... It looks nothing like the Yadagrasu's shadow! <laughs> it looks like someone with a unicorn horn, though. Huh. Why do I feel like this is going to be incredibly relevant? Miles Edgeworth, how do you explain this grotesque shape? C calm down, Francisca. The way the light needs to be shown on the Queen's statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the King's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the Queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part? Yes, and that one part alone is enough to fill the rest of the Yadagarasu's shadow. The hand! Yeah, you can see the four fingers and the thumb. Oh, that's ingenious. Why didn't you say that in the first place? You're right. I, I apologize. Now, what part of the Queen's statue was used to complete the Yadagarasu's shadow? <laughs> the raised left hand. Take that! Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Ah! That's right. It can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand. Franziska, can we please adjust the spotlight's position? So that it only shines on the queen's left hand. Alright, let's give it a try and see what we get. It's... <laughs> yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. Literally, beforehand. <laughs> and then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around, which we can assume was also a part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yadagarasu's shadow had vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Yadagarasu never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that the visited was Babal, Although it can be assumed that the Yadagarasu had an accomplice in Alabast. An accomplice? But who? An accomplice that may not necessarily have been told the full story. Look at the note in Damask the Second's hand. Instructions saying to steal the Primadux statue. Well, actually, maybe saying that these this is a request to steal the statue might be a stretch. Maybe Damascus II was told to do something else with the statue, but then again, 
if <coughs> excuse me if I were the fake Yadagarasu trying to manipulate this person this glory seeker this wannabe gentleman thief I would appeal to their fantasy and ask them to steal it because that's what Demask the second believes that the real Demask would want to do to steal a rich valuable hmm I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the Shadow Show. I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. Investigation complete! How's the... <coughs> How's the investigation going? Yay, it's bad! <laughs> Detective Bad, have you come to join us in investigating the Yadagarasu? I've left the murder in Agent Lane's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Yadagarasu, so yes. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you might regret it. Uh-oh. Does this happen to incriminate one of Edgeworth's friends? We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So if you please... When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling ya, I'm a genuine international journalist. Oh god. <laughs> oh, not her? We saw a lot of heart earlier, didn't we? Oh, I forgot it. I forgot we saw her. She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist. Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. Oh. Well, what in the world? The Yadagarasu is flying through the air. The times they are a-changing. It's not just man, but evidence. Even they lie to us now. <laughs> that's clearly not a human. I feel like that's something being thrown over the wall? Like, the, what am I even looking at, man? It's a smudge. That's what it is. It's, it's a smudge. W when was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the fourth and fifth floors were put out. Were, were put out. Pert were put out. It was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. I see. So this was taken after the fire. The blur in this picture took off from the Bobbley's embassy, flew over the boundary and headed for the embassy of Alabast. Objection! This is simply not possible. People are incapable of flight. Is that a fact? I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person once. Actually, come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd prefer to forget one of them. Ugh. Maybe it happens more often than we think. Now I have to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph. Well, the Yadagarasu took off from the Bobbley's Embassy, so I should start from there. Franziska, I need to return to the Babal investigation for a bit. Alright. Well, shoot. Yes? I wonder what that photo earlier was all about. 
Indeed. That photo certainly was... interesting. I believe this necessitates a need to investigate the Bobbly's embassy some more. I suppose we have no choice if we are to conduct the perfect investigation. I suppose so. I will have to pass through the Theatrum Neutralis to reach the Bobbly's embassy. So the Yadagorasi was just a shadow. The calling card that was sent is what threw everyone off and made them assume things. It's possible that all of the events tonight were part of the overall plan. I'm going to continue investigating on the Alabastian side. You two, as I always say, don't do anything stupid, alright? I wonder if he's alright. It's a new Oh, I wonder if he's alright. It's unusual for him to be so nice. I think it's simply that he is concerned for our well-being, Franziska. Okay, does Elaine have anything to say? <laughs> what a farce. Turns out that what I thought was the Yadagras whose shadow was some statues instead. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everyone was in a panic. And here I thought you'd come over to throw some sarcastic remark in my face. Of course not. You and I were both of one mind in pursuit of the truth. <laughs> but are we really of one mind, though? I'll be returning to the Babal investigation now. I'll contact you if I find anything. You sure are as stubborn as a rock. Nice chat. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. Alright, I'm counting on you. I choose to believe that it is that that moment that Larry surfaced for another breath of air and scared the bejesus out of bad. <laughs> the mental image is pleasing to me. Okay. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth. Now come on, let's get back to our investigation. Yes, let's. I don't think anything's changed here. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth. Please accept these, courtesy of Ambassador Polano. <laughs> More coupons? <laughs> Is someone keeping track of how many he Edgeworth has gotten? <laughs> That's alright. I appreciate the sentiment, however, I must decline. Oh, come on. You might as well take them since he was nice enough to offer. Uh, thank you, and I hope you'll visit our embassy's cafeteria to redeem them. It appears that Ambassador Polano isn't the only one adamantly handing these out. Okay. Um. Right. Let's head inside. Oh, I should speak to Kay. To think, after all that running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Polano, but I have yet to find his killer. Then I guess his murder really was the work of the Yadagarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yadagarasu. The real Yadagarasu is a noble vigilante who is only out to steal the truth. Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, alright? Mr. Polano? Actually, there is one thing you can do. Will you allow us to take another look, ar look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure. Please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If it will bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Polano. You're a total gentleman. <laughs> you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Polano. Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? 
we should probably start by comparing the statue of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. Yeah, when I came into this room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that the person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key to the Yadagarasu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it! That woman is almost definitely the Mr. Cochin's killer! Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Speaking of the Yadagarasu and mysteries, I received the most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too? Yes. He has been chasing after the Yadagarasu for all these years. Uncle Bad... Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. What? This kind of looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yadagarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this could be how that person escaped! Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. Alright. As always, people first. Is there really any place left we haven't checked out yet in the Bobbly's Embassy? Interpol was conducting its investigation when you were being held by Agent Sheena. Because of that, I was unable to examine the fireplace and the Secretariat's desk. You know what? Yeah. If this embassy is symmetrical, maybe the fireplace is symmetrical too. True! And since he's here, we should talk with Ambassador Polano some more, too. He looks so sad and lonely since Mr. Cochin died. Yes, he does. And you are correct. I have a few issues I still need to discuss with him. We should make the best of this opportunity. Let's see. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask you about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight. Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fires here in the Ibabali's embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. You could have mentioned that earlier. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jam and Ninja show. Oh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jam and Ninja show. Luckily, the only, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Jam and Ninja show was the second one of the night. Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, Tim Detective Bad make the reference to the first fire. When was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the fourth and fifth floors were put out. I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Oh. So is this... This photo is from before the shadow appeared, huh? If I have that right? So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor. 
I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floors above it that caused it. That's... how should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office here, and Manny himself, all gone in the blink of an eye. Hmm. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Palano. Oops, look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well. Yes, very well. Let's see, I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First I woke up and then I brushed my teeth. After that I had a roll for breakfast. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like a condensed version. All right, I can do that for you. <laughs> okay. Morning activities. So what did Mr. Cochin and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the Gem and Ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Cochin's office. Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Oh. Which is why both the Primaduck statue and the Bobbley's knife set are down here. I see. Oh, but the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain though, huh? Oh, about that. I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. Okay, okay. Pause. Okay. One. The Yadagarasu sent a calling card saying that they were going to steal Babal's treasures. Steal Babal's dirtiest secret. Two. Palano and Cochin burned documents on the very morning of this planned day that they knew the Yadagrasi would come. G Gee, I wonder what sort of documents they were burning. Ah <laughs> oh, man, okay. I think I think Palano is in on the smuggling ring. He's just too shady, man. Okay, like, there's no way he's the real yacht. The, I mean, the the real fake Yadagarasu, if you if you know what I mean. But yeah, no, he's he's still a criminal. Oh, about that, I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. <laughs> I guess I'm up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger. Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning, he got mad at me. I spilled some Bobbley's ink onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me, saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently, orders go up the chain of command around here. Hmm. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do. Being an ambassador and all. I wonder if we, like, check out the... the coat and the weapons rack in the back. If we take those off, can we find the spilled ink? Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the Theatrum Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while later, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm... There was a commemorative photo op at the end. 
It was a fantastic photo of the three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor to prepare for my handshake photo op with the Gemin Ninja. He seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me, but during the second one I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Cochin again after the start of the Steel Samurai show? Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep. I see. Ambassador Paleno, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there is anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, alright? Hmm, I'll come back to you. Let's see if there's anything new here. We still don't know where the blade of the Bobbley's knife went. Could it be that the killer walked away with it? Hmm. Let's check out the statue. So this is the real Primaduck statue. This is really valuable, right? That's what they say. Okay, you're not seriously considering the theft of this statue, are you? No way, Mr. Edgeworth. I wasn't thinking about anything like that. Narrator's voice. She was indeed thinking of that. I was just calculating in my head how much the statue is worth. Hmm. That sounds mighty suspicious to me. Right, yeah, so... There was a dude standing here that we couldn't get past, wasn't there? You can see the Alabastian Embassy through this window. So where were you when you were investigating over there, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, now you can see it from here. I was there on the fifth floor. That's where Demask the Second was killed. What? You don't mean THE Mask Demask the Second? Aw, oh, poor guy. As a fellow second generation thief, I can't just turn a blind eye to this. Even though Demask the Second is was merely an imposter of the original. <laughs> I never even considered that angle. It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. We have a phone. Some files, a blue book, a file of ink, an overturned chair. And an open desk. It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it doesn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we can rifle through the drawer a bit. Hmm. I suppose we really should take a look. That orange scrap of paper. No way. This is a rather unusual shape for a notepad. I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere. Just a notepad. Okay, it's, it's, shaped, it's shaped like Pizza Hut. But this orange note... Yeah, my god. It... I thought it was just a torn scrap, but... The Pizza Hut notepad. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, we're deducing the hell out of that. Oh, this is gonna be spicy. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? it looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Oh yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. You've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. 
Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the, by the fires? Ambassador Polano, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm. This looks like Manny's handwriting. I see. In that case... Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murdered Damask II. Damask II? Then this note... Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damask II to steal the Primatuck statue. What? Manny! Tried to steal Alabast Primatuck statue? We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Uh, yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any ideas as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. Well, we'll get to you in a moment. Let's keep looking around. Ink? There is a bottle of Bobbily's ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Polano, it looks like your precious Bobbily's ink is all right after all. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there is something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Oh! Huh. Okay. It looks like a bunch of flyers with coupons attached to them. But Paul sure gives away a lot of different coupons. Maybe I should create one of my own. I could call it the Great Thief Coupon. And what kind of discount would that net you? The five finger kind, what else? And I'd steal an extra thing or two for the bearer. Things such as? Such as the truth, what else would I steal? What I wouldn't give to have a mountain of your coupons right about now. <laughs> it looks like, oh, okay. That looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look all that broken, so why don't you try sitting in it? No, I'd better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene at all times. Wait, but you're always touching all sorts of things at crime scenes. That's because I am a prosecutor, and it's a part of my job to examine things. And my job is to be a great thief. Which is exactly why you are not allowed to touch anything. <laughs> okay. And the fireplace. A fireplace, huh? So Babal's offices have them too. Two? There is a fireplace in relatively the same location in the Alabastian Embassy. However, we found something there that I'd rather not recall ever again. I still can't believe that we found that lady's undershirt in the fireplace. If it was that traumatizing, why don't you try creating new memories with this fireplace? You could climb inside and can play hide and seek. And come out covered in snoot in suit. I think not. Ha, huh, you really have no sense of fun, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. Alright. Alright, Polino. You have some talking to do. I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink. Um, 
I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. Well, when I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Well, wit crystal oil burns green when it's lit, so you can see by its lantern. Hmm. And Bobbily's ink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was Manny's ink that had caught on fire. So that's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. The case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery! What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? Hmm... Something very large that was covered in ink. Hmm. I believe that you said you might have had an idea... <gasps> A pile of fake bills, maybe? Hmm. Oh, anyway, I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damascus II. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Yadagarasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. For you see, Babal's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know that about Babal's, uh, Babal's Primbaduck statue? Of course he knew. That's why he was the only person I could, I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, Let me handle it. It'll be all right. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the re reunited Kadopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure that you are the next Kadopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. Oh, here you are, Mr. Edgeworth. Investigation complete. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yup, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, okay? Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Oh, we can set up the replica. Um, hologram. Good work, detective. Oh, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yadagarasu just like my father, right? Please don't make uh, don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, okay? However, I can say that it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. <laughs> you bet. So what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget. 
Mr. Thief, is it? The thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief. <laughs> You're coming to rely on it, aren't you? I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered, and the ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening, when no other bird dares take wing, what alone remains all-seeing. Now, witness the true power of the real modern-day Robin Hood. Well, well, well. I think that might be a pile of money. It seems there are other things besides what the Ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route the person K saw used as well. Oh, wh what is this? This is some sort of light show I was not told about. This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I inputted. Really? That is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Ahem. I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Right. Oh. Someone moved the grandfather clock. They have quite a bit of things different. Well, as always, people first. Yes? Ready for a view on how to use Little Thief? Okay, here we go. Objects outlined in yellow are things that are not present in our time, but were in the past. Things outlined in a dotted line are things that exist now, but didn't in the past. I see. You can examine and interact with replicated people and objects as you normally do. You can even present evidence whenever you find an inconsistency. Oh, and be sure to point out mistakes in the recreation with evidence, too. I think I remember now. Thank you for the refresher course, Kay. If there's something you don't get about Little Thief, feel free to ask any time, okay? Looks like it was quite the fire, huh? Yes, it appears that the flames spread fairly qu quickly to some of the other rooms as well. Yeah, but thanks to Gummy's info, I was able to re recreate this room. Plus, the burnt stuff is still lying around, so you can check those as well. The state of this room before and after the fire. It, I can probably obtain some new information by comparing the differences. Yes, that's what I'll do. And use, a, use any new information to complete my logic. Detective, you took part in the initial Babal investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I'd have been burnt to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always warn our staff that in the case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh. Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic? Detective, did you see the Yadagarasu that came to the Babali's embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. The second fire broke out around the time the Yadagarasu was spotted in Alabast. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babal, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at this Yadagarasu that entered Babal. Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person wearing a lawn coat. Well, that's not enough to make a positive ID, you know? Still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. 
A person in a lawn coat. Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The Yatagarasu that appeared in Alabast was proven to be just a fabrication. A shadow. In light of that fact, the Yatagarasu that appeared in Babal is also suspect. You can't be serious! Not when we're this close to capturing the fake. I mean, Callisto you. So the Yatagarasu appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Cochin, then disappeared. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Yatagarasu? Uh, I did, but, well, this embassy is huge, sir. I got separated from the other staff members I was with and was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, Detective. I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir. But, you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wandered around in the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. He covered for me until you got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm. I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her here. Well, just before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. Hmm. Agent Sheena mentioned something about chasing the Yatagarasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then, during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Yatagarasu. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. Why are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? <laughs> okay. And, um, Peleno, anything to say? Oh, nothing new. Well... Smoke and mirrors and lots of trickery. So there were twinfold distractions in the Alabast Embassy. The shadow, which was set up, and Demask the second, who was sicked on the statue, by Manny. I don't think. Yeah, no, I believe that Manny Cochin was fearful of the fake Yadagrasu. I believe he and and uh, Plano were burning documents trying to cover their tracks in preparation for that. So Cochin trying to get the other embassy statue stolen is not part of the fake Yadgarasu's plan. Now I can't quite tell from here if the fires were caused by Cochin or if they were sabotage on the part of the fake Yadgarasu. For all I know, the fake Yadagarasu could have been an opportunist and just used it to their advantage. Very interesting. I am really curious if this office also has a fake wall behind the fireplace, but... Uh, it's not highlighted here, so maybe that's not the case. Well... So maybe the ink stain that Polano mentioned is behind the grandfather clock right now. Definitely have to take note of that. 
I do have to wonder though, if there was ink spilled on the wall right near the door, wouldn't it have burned up green? There's just something off here, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I suppose we'll have to, um, we'll have to figure out what happened next time, so, yeah, in the meantime, I'm Zephyr the Jester, this has been more Ace Attorney Investigations. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, I'll catch you next time, so until then, please take care.